Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this afternoon. I want to talk to you about radio frequency radiation. Now, what is that? It's a form of non-ionizing radiation which is used to power the cell phones most of you use much of the day. So that the radiation that powers cell phones that comes from these towers you see all over the place is radio frequency radiation. And Wi-Fi is radio frequency radiation. This is a term which is used in science, um, but it's something that we need to be very much aware of because the amount of exposure we are all encountering to radio frequency radiation is increasing, is increasing all I'm not sure I published press the right way. I think you uh, quit the the board. So which? Yeah, the yeah, all there. Okay. Right. If it don't work, you can okay. uh, press here. I have uh, done. Uh, of research in this area, but I, other than the fact that I've done that research, I have no conflicts to declare. Now, we all are dependent on other bodies to decide something we encounter is hazardous or not. And one of the most important bodies in the world in relation to things that cause cancer is the International Agency for Research on Cancer in Lyon, IARC. Now, the IARC brought together a working group in 2011 to review all the evidence that was then available on radio frequency radiation and cancer. And their conclusion was that there is limited evidence in humans for the carcinogenicity of radio frequency irradiation. But they noted that positive associations have been observed between exposure to radio frequency radiation for wireless phones with glioma and another tumor which affects the nerve which we hear acoustic, the best we did know, acoustic neuroma. They also noted that there was, at that time, limited evidence in experimental animals for the carcinogenicity of radiofrequency radiation. So their overall evaluation was that radiofrequency electromagnetic fields are possibly carcinogenic falling within their group 2B. Now I'm going to review the evidence that has accumulated since then, which convinces me and many of my colleagues that radio frequency radiation should be regarded as a group 1 definite human carcinogen. So why do we now believe that radio frequency radiation causes brain cancer. And there are three important series of case control which are human studies. What is a case control study? In a case control study, the researchers identify people who have developed the cancer of interest, in this case brain cancer or gliomas, and then from the same population where the people who develop brain cancer live, they identify people of the same age and sex who have not developed brain cancer. And then they compare the exposures 
in this case, the radio frequency radiation between the cases and the controls. Now, these three studies, one of them was a large international study called Interphone in many countries, including Canada, and this found a twofold increased risk for brain cancer for after 10 or more years, years of use of cell phones. And then there's an investigator in Sweden called Lennart Ardell, who's done a large number of studies. These are important because Sweden was one of the first countries to introduce cell phones, so that people there who had a longer opportunity to, for exposure to radio frequency radiation than we had, for example, in Sweden. And his studies showed a two to five-fold increased risk of brain cancer after prolonged use of cell phones, especially when the exposure began early in life, as in the teenage years. And then more recently, a large study has been published from France, where they found up to a five-fold increased risk of brain cancer after five or more years of use of cell phones. I don't want to spend too much time on these tables which show the actual data. What I want to indicate is that if you look at the fourth column where it says OR, this is a measure of risk. And you'll see with time since start of regular use of 10 or 4 more years, the risk is more than twofold. And those numbers in the last column are what we call confidence intervals, which means that we are confident to 95% probability that this is highly significant and that the twofold risk <laughs> Uh, it is within the range of 1.4 to 3.3. There are these other studies uh, which have uh, looked into the question. One of them, which is based on what they call the Million Women Study, which was women who were recruited the study after they had mammography screening in Britain and they looked at the effect of 10 or more years of use and couldn't find any effect. Now part of the problem here is that we believe they didn't really measure the exposure to cell phones very efficiently. But here's one of the hard health studies showing a threefold increased risk of brain cancer after 25 or more years of use, and here's the French study, uh, nearly twofold after 10 years of use. And this is more detail on the French study. It was a fairly large study, study 231 cases, 446 controls, and you can see the risk goes up with time when they were exposed to cell phones, up to a five-fold increased risk of the most important form of brain cancer, glioma, as well as increased risk with some other brain cancers. This is, these are people who've done studies of the uh, tumors in the nerve, which is between the ear and the brain, acoustic neuroma, acoustic hearing, and the Million Women Study of Benson, they found an increased risk after 10 or more years of use. They didn't find an increased risk in Korea, but they did find an increased risk of brain of acoustic neuroma, twofold increased risk after 10 
to 15 years of exposure to mobile phones. We are increasingly concerned about exposures to young people. And I'll tell you a bit more why in a moment. But this particular study, though overall they didn't find an increased risk, when you looked at the certain portion of the study where they used what they call operator records, that is the records of the cell phone companies of the exposure, and they looked at years since they became uh, regular users, if you compare the risks of those who had 2.8 years or more of use with those who were never regular users, they had twice the increased risk of brain cancer. There's increasing concern that when you change what is called the modulation, that is the time way in which the radio frequency radiation varies with time and in the way it powers our cell phones, that not all radio types of radio frequency radiation have the same effect. And part of what we noticed earlier, or well, Hardell noticed, is that the radiation that is used to power the cell phones you're largely using now, 3G, is more carcinogenic than the radiation that, that powered earlier, the second generation of mobile phone use. And you see that red line going up, a uh, much greater effect with 3G compared to 2G. Now when we notice that, we have to be extremely concerned about the pending introduction of a new generation of cell phones called 5G. Because 5G is, although the uh, radiation doesn't penetrate as far, they are going to have to put up cell phones about every three to four houses in streets and it will penetrate and it is likely to damage uh, vegetation, insects and we're very concerned it may be harmful to humans. And this is another figure of what I showed you before. This image is, shows you in blue the intensity, intense radiation when a cell phone is held 15 millimeters, 1.5 centimeters from the side of the head. And you can see it's concentrated, the radiation in blue is concentrated very near the ear. If you put it further away, now 2.25 millimeters, 2.5 centimeters, then it's more widely distributed, but it is a lower intensity. So one thing we say is don't hold cell phones hard against your ear. Keep it at least 25 millimeters, preferably 50, 5 centimeters from the side of your head and whenever possible text rather than do verbal communication. One of the strange things that has been noticed is that there have been a number of unusual clinical case reports, seven in the literature till now, suggesting that radio frequency radiation is a, probably an avoidable cause of breast cancer. And this comes from these case reports and also the evidence we have from studies of human toxicology. 
uh, there have been some marketing uh, for cell phones to be kept in bronze. This is a, the, uh, the first case reported uh, in 2009 from a physician in California. You see uh, the mammogram and the white areas, which is cancer. And what he found, there are invasive multiple primary tumors in this woman who was 34 years old, an avid runner, a Chinese-American woman who had kept a cell phone four hours a day in her bra for 10 years. And then another physician, Dr. West, uh, in the Midwest and US, reported another four cases. Here's one of them. You see the, this woman kept the cell phone on the outside of her right breast. And you'll see on the screen to the right of the right breast these dots which indicate cancer. And this was a woman who was only 21 years old. And here are some other uh, examples. There were two cases, this is one of the multifocal tumours linked to cell phones kept in the bra. Now these seven cases were negative for genetic risk factors, so there was no family history or as far as they could ascertain other risk factors for breast cancer. It was an unusual location of multifocal tumours, which were where the phones were kept. There was no significant evidence of damage away from the areas of cellular phone use. The two, unfortunately, already had metastases, meaning the, the cancer had already spread from the breast to other parts of the body. So we have to be very careful about this. We have other reasons for reducing that this form of radiation causes breast cancer, exposure, inflammation, and various experimental studies I went for. Another form of tumor which has been associated with radio frequency radiation has come from Israel. And these relate to what we call the salivary glands, the glands which help us digest. And this is a figure showing where these glands are, and this is an indication of where people tend to hold the cell phones so that the cancers of the parotid or salivary glands, which have tripled in Israel with quite a number of people under the age of 20, seem to be clearly associated with cell phone use. And this graph shows the increase that they plotted over time, published in a paper in 2011. This caused the Israeli Dental Association to warn that one in every five rare malignant tumors of the cheek occurs in someone under age 20, and that young people should use headsets and speaker phones and limit direct exposure of the head to radio frequency fields from cell phones. Now, underlying all this, there have been concerns about children. We, of course, know that children have developing brains and other organs, but we have reasons to believe that children may be particularly susceptible to the effects of RFR. And we're concerned that even some ongoing studies, there's a study called Moby Kids, which may have been initiated too early, which is in a number of countries. Even if those studies are negative, we believe that exposure early in life could increase cancer risk in adults. I'm turning away from the studies in humans to studies in animals. And this summarizes something called tumor promotion. 
This means if you already expose an animal to a known carcinogen and then expose them to radio frequency fields, you can see an acceleration of the growth of cancers caused by the initial carcinogen. But more important than that, last year, the results of a very large study conducted by the National Toxicology Program in the United States were released. And these were studies on rats, you can't see this, I'll just summarize it briefly. They were rats that found there was clear evidence of carcinogens, they had strange tumors called malignant schwannomas. In these animals, it was in the heart, it was the way they were exposed. There was some evidence of increased risk of, of malignant lyomas. And there was also evidence of damage to DNA, which is the special uh, DNA is what we know carries our genetic information and also when it's damaged will cause cancer. And this large study in the US was then confirmed by an actually even larger study which was conducted in rats over their total lifetime, as you'll see over 2,000 rats. The Ramazzini Institute is a prestigious institute in Italy uh, which is well known for these types of studies. And importantly, they had exposure which reproduced the type of environmental exposure to radio frequency radiation generated by the uh, antennae of radio base stations of mobile stones. Once again, they had a significant in increase in the incidence of heart tumors, these swimmers, change in heart cell, uh, swan cell hyperplasia, and, but a non-significant increase in the incidence of malignant glial tumors of treated female rats. Last year, we were startled when some scientists in the UK showed this slide in a very critical paper in which they plotted the change in the extent of gliomas in the UK over all ages related to where the tumours were in the brain. If the tumours were in the temporal and frontal lobes, the front of the brain and the temporal region, which is the areas most exposed to radio frequency radiation, if you hold up a cell phone, you have this red line showing a significant increase over time, whereas there was no increase of cell phones, of radio, of these tumors in other brain regions. We also have documented from two countries, the US and Brazil, that the incidence of these types of cancers is significantly increased in children, adolescents and younger age groups from birth to 24 years in the United States. And they have reported in Brazil that the mortality from brain cancers has increased by 90%, i.e. more than double in 25 years. So things are happening which we have to be concerned about. Are very cautious. So I conclude that what we're dealing with here is what we would call a group one, IR category one, human carcinogen. We know that radio frequency radiation is ubiquitous, it's around us here. Even if the risk per individual is low, it is widely distributed. 
and could become, and the cancers it induces could become a major public health problem. What we call the precautionary principle must be applied. That is, we should do for radiofrequency radiation what we learned to do for x-rays ionizing radiation years ago. Some of you may remember that there was a time if you went to a shoe shop, you could put your feet in a little box at the bottom and see the image of your feet. And that was x-rays. And then people realized it was hazardous. And as I said yesterday in McGill, one of the most important studies over x-rays related to a very large study in the Nike Kingdom, which found that x-rays of the pelvis in, for women who were pregnant to make sure that there would be no problem over delivery resulted in leukemia in their offspring. So we have to reduce our exposure to as low as reasonably achievable. Canada, the Ministry of Health, Public Health in Canada, uh, promotes what is called Safety Code 6. This is meant to ensure that workers and the general public are not exposed to high doses of radiofrequency radiation. Unfortunately, it will not protect people, even if applied, from the sort of exposures these studies in humans in France, in Sweden, in Canada have shown increases the risk of brain cancer. So that must be revised. It's extremely difficult to achieve. Governments by and large will not listen. But the public have got to persuade them that this is something they must do. They must do everything possible to reduce our exposure. And I concur with the many people who think that the introduction of 5G, which would increase exposure, should be banned. Thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have.